So, last section, 16.8 for Cal Poly, 16.9 for Pasadena City College, the divergence theorem. Divergence theorem says, let S be the boundary of a piecewise smooth oriented closed surface, E. So E is the closed surface, and S is the boundary of that. Given with positive outwards orientation, then let F be a vector field with comp whose components have continuous partial derivatives, at least the first derivative. Then, if you recall, this was the flux of F across E will be the double integral over E of F dot dS, the oriented surface. We take the orientation with N. Cal Poly uses this notation. Pasadena uses this notation. It's the same thing. That would be the triple integral. So that's the volume of what? Del dotted with V. Divergence of F basically. And if you recall, that is the partial with respect to X, the partial with respect to Y, the partial with respect to Z, dotted with P, Q, and R, and that's going to be a scalar. So I start the first example with something that we did two sections ago and that took some time and I use symmetry then to shorten the problem. Now we don't need to use that. You'll notice you'll get to that same answer a lot more efficiently and quickly. It says use the divergent theorem to find the outward flux of F across the boundary S. Well, okay. What's S? S is the surface of the cube cut from the first quadrant, cube with x equal a, y equal a, and z equal a. So we did something like this, and we had to do it over six places. Back then, I did it using a shortcut. If you recall, I said, if you look at the bottom, this side and the front are the same and if you look at that side that side and the top are the same and kind of use symmetry on that but now i don't need to use symmetry because now if i want to figure out the flux across that of f dot ds or d rho whatever you want to call it that would be the triple integral over region e of del dot it with f so not the curl of f divergence well let's get that out of the way what is that that is the integral from zero to a zero to a and zero to a of what what is del dot it with f that is the partial with respect to x So if I take del dotted with f, that is the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, the partial with respect to z, dotted with x squared over 2, y squared over 2, and z squared over 2. So you could actually do it without listing it. And like that, uh, del crossed with f, the partial with respect to x, that is x plus y plus z. And that's pretty much very close to what we did. And this is going to be dx, dy, dz. It doesn't matter really which order you do those in. Right? And you work this out. And there it is. Just that simple integral. And that takes care of business. And what if I looked at the second example that we have? So again, we're looking at those solids enclosed by this surface S. S is the region cut by a cylinder. Solid, x squared plus y squared equal 9 or less than or equal to 9. So between negative 1 and 4. So we're talking about something like this. Well, 
we're going to say that double integral f dot ds and the directions will straighten that out over s is going to be the triple integral and let's see how that works i'm going to run the partial with respect to x that's one the partial with respect to y with respect to y that would be x z the partial with respect to z that's zero right dv which is the integral and if i run this accurately i'm gonna do one plus r the cosine of theta times z r dr oops dz r dr d theta and z runs from negative one to four theta runs from zero to two pi and r runs from zero to three And how about this solid? Well, that's a sphere. We know how that looks. There we go, something like that with a radius of 4. Well, how does that work? The double integral over s, so the flux across this is going to be the triple integral, partial with respect to x, to be x squared with respect to y, with respect to z, dv. That's going to be the triple integral, and if you notice, I'm going to factor a 3 out of that. That would be x squared plus y squared plus z squared which is 16 and that's going to be a rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta theta runs from 0 to 2 pi phi runs from 0 to pi and rho runs from 0 to 4 and that will take care of business again very easy to do so Stokes theorem figures figured how to do circulation with ease and the divergence theorem flux with ease by simply finding the volume and stokes theorem by simply finding the area or using the area i should say how about this i'm looking at one of those so it goes three one of those z equals 0 and this is going to run down but z is going to with z equals 0 this is going to run 1 2 3 it's going to cross right there and it's going to in the y 1 to the right 1 up 1 to the right 1 up 1 to the right it's going to chop right there right so it's going to look like like this you have a cylinder and what you did, you brought a knife and you cut, you cut this part off. Well, okay, how does that work? Well, the flux across that solid is going to be the triple integral. The partial with respect to x, that's a 1 plus partial with respect to y plus partial with respect to z. And the volume of that, how's that going to work? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run Z. Z is going to run, if you notice, from R the sine of theta minus 3 to 0. R d R d theta. R will run from 0 to, theta will run from 0 to pi. And R will run from 0 to 3 specifically. Because they match. 
So the work, even the integration is not that bad. You'll be surprised. I should put three dots to indicate that there's more work to do. Just I'm setting this up, but you could work it out.